Hello and uh, welcome to Nice Big Wrench. Today my uh, tracer ignored the dirt. Um, I'm going to replace the uh, clutch cable. Now there's a problem with these. Uh, a lot of people in the tracer community have uh, reported that the clutch cable uh, snaps uh, just after the um, lever because the radius of the curve that it has to make is too tight and over time uh, using the clutch basically wears the cable out and the cable snaps um, and a lot of people have had this problem but it's, it seems to be only the first generation of tracers that this happens to um, so I've bought this uh, from Fowlers of Bristol now this is a different part number to the one that comes as standard spare with the bike um, and this, that radius there, that curve is more gentle than the curve that's there. You see how that's really tight, that join there. So basically I'm going to yeah, replace the cable. What I've recently found is the clutch has started feeling really notchy. Like as I, as I pull it, it feels like it's grinding, which is probably a good sign that it's on its way out. Um, it could just be it needed lubing, but the bike's got 24,000 miles on it now. So it's had, uh, and it's been used in all weather, so it's quite likely that the clutch cable is knackered. Pre-ordered the part before I had a problem, so that I knew this day would come. Um, and I could uh, replace it. So yeah, what we're going to do is we're going to play with this little adjuster here and we're going to slacken all that off and we're also going to slacken off down here uh, these two nuts here that you can see they're um, but uh, the clutch cable goes out that direction through the engine and then it comes out it comes under here and then the other side of this engine bolt behind this bit of frame and then up underneath and then passes there oh, can you see that that's a bit dark let's try that again yeah see that that's the cable this is the cable right here and uh, yeah so I'm not sure if I need to undo this mounting point here but then it goes up the side of the fork there to the bar. So yeah, we shall uh, see how that goes. Right, first step is to uh, loosen off the uh, nuts at the bottom end. You know, I'm not sure if you can see, but the other side of this cable grommet, there's a little bit of metal, a little bit of black metal there that bends out of the way basically I'll bend that out of the way and then the grommet goes down towards the engine to get uh, to get off the bike okay, but first I need to undo this nut which is a 12 mil let's see if I could do this one-handed now that's loose enough be unhooked. Alright now I need to unhook that little bar somehow. Oh, well. Basically I need to now push this arrangement, this silver part needs to go that direction, which I need two hands for. So I'll have to let go of the camera. Alright, what you didn't see was I used a uh, large spanner lever of some description to move to put the pressure on the clutch plate to move it closer and then on the lever end I undid this adapter or this spinner so that it was all the way that direction and then there was enough slack in the cable that I could pop the cable out now the cable pops out underneath there. let's see if we can see this underneath Oh, it's not very good but yeah that pops out the bottom now you've got one free end of the cable and what I'm gonna do is
with the purple. Here's this part next to the radiator that's going to be a problem. So we'll see how that goes. Not entirely sure how that comes apart. Right, we can see now this little plate here. I'm sure you'll see it when you do it on yours. That little plate there hooks up around the cable and then the cable is held in place. So what I'm gonna do is use an Allen key to loosen off this bolt. Talk amongst yourselves for a minute. And I'm hoping that plate, well, yep, and that plate bends down. Sorry about the autofocus, there's a new camera. Yeah, that plate then bends down, and I can get the cable out from behind it. So, what I've done is I've uh, the cable through mostly now the sensible thing to do what I've heard is you tie one end of the new cable to the old cable and as you pull the old cable through then you uh, uh, it pulls the new cable in and it's starting to snow brilliant um, but what I've done because it's very tight and I'm not sure I'm going to be able to do that so what I've done is I've reached up underneath and pulled up pulled out that much of the cable and I'm going to get the new one and poke it through the same way and I'll follow it through. I might tie it on from here and pull it through from there because it's a little bit sort of more slack. Right, what I've done is poked the, pulled the old cable through, this one, and then I've pulled the new cable, started to pull that through there, and I've zip tied the two ends together like this. I've made sure that this end pulls the old one pulls and doesn't snag on anything. I'm hoping I should just give it a pull. This is the moment of truth and it should all come through, the new one should come through. And there we go. How about that? Sometimes the things you read on the internet are true. So there's the new one. I've just got to poke that up and then reattach it. Right, as you can see, I've uh, reattached the clutch cable at the bottom end. I've put the uh, the bottom grommet in this little cage here. And I've bent the little tab back over to lock it in place. Obviously it's still slack because I've not attached the top end of the cable yet. At the top, I just wanted to show you, this is the new cable. You see how it's got a, a nice even radius and it's got a longer metal sleeve from there to there. Whereas this is the old one, and you can see how it's got a very sharp angle there. And it's also um, a lot shorter, a bit of metal. If I pull the cable out, you can see there's a very pronounced kink in the cable, which is where it wears. Now it could be that mine's started feeling a bit grabby because that started rubbing on the outside of the sheath. Um, but yeah, that's basically the problem that that is now a weak point and that'll snap eventually. So it didn't need doing, but it was gonna need doing it eventually. So now all I have to do is attach this grommet back in this slot here from the underneath and then we should be great, good to go. Right, and that's it, we are done. We have a nice smooth actuating clutch that's not notchy, not forgetting to do up that little bracket there. So we've got to retighten that. One thing I did have to do, because it was slightly too long, and so I did have to loosen this nut, push the sleeve back up, move this nut, this second nut, back down the shaft that way, and then retighten that nut in order to move the whole thing a little bit, uh, a little bit further, further forward. But yeah, apart from that, it's all done and that took me maybe an hour and all I needed was a, a 12 mil spanner and uh, that was a, oh uh, yeah and I needed 
pair of, uh, used a pipe wrench to wedge in my bars and push the cage in. But apart from that, that was it. 12, 12 mil spanner and uh, an hour's work. And uh, yeah, no more worries. Right, catch you next time.